What a lot of people don't understand is that driving fatigued is like driving drunk. If you stayed up all night and are driving home in the early hours of the morning, your driving performance will be worse than if you are twice the legal limit for alcohol. Fatigue affects the brain in a number of ways, but probably the best way to understand it is to think about it like what happens when the community is using too much electricity in summer. Effectively, a tired brain sheds load and decides that there's a whole bunch of things it can't do anymore. What we see as people get tired is a combined effect, that is attentional tunnelling and occasional and increasing lapses in attention. The combined consequence of that is that the map of the road that you're driving on, the destination and your awareness of cars and vehicles and the position on the road tend to decline and as a result you don't have a clear idea necessarily of where you're going and in the event that something unexpected happens your response can be significantly delayed and cause an accident. Attentional tunnelling is a bit like tunnel vision in as much as that your brain tends to focus on those things immediately in front of it and of most relevance in the situation that you're in. Unfortunately, however, when you're engaged in attentional tunnelling, you tend to miss things that are happening around you or that your brain decides aren't necessarily important in the circumstances. The difficulty is sometimes it forgets things while you're driving, for example, about the cars around you or what the speed limit is or whether there is a corner coming up or not. In addition to your brain slowing down and your attention tending to focus and tunnel, one of the other things happens is that you have what are called lapses of awareness. In the same way that a fluoro light burns out, it doesn't just get dimmer over time. What happens is that it just flicks off and then comes back on again. When you have a lapse of tension, you effectively zone out for a period of time and during that period of time you're not actually aware of what's going on around you in the same way as you would be while you're awake. Eventually if you become so fatigued that you can't stay awake anymore, the light goes off, sometimes for a long time. There are two things that drive fatigue. The first is the amount of sleep you've had and how long you've been awake. And the second thing is how much time you've spent driving. Generally, the research tells us is that once you've had less than five hours sleep in the prior 24 hours, then you're at a significantly elevated risk of a fatigue related accident or injury. It also tells us that once you've been driving for more than two hours at a stretch, then your risk of a fatigue related error goes up. But as a rough rule of thumb, less than five in the prior 24 and more than two at the wheel is the red flag.